Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I've got another pick a card reading for you. The topic is, is your self-talk constructive? Now this is such an important topic. Why? It's important because when your self-talk is really, really good, it will make you excellent at manifesting your heart's desires, okay? Your heart and your mind and everything will be in a line and you'll be able to manifest the things that you want. You'll improve your performance at work. You'll be able to attract relationships or the right relationships. Um, you'll be able to heal. And that's actually how I got into looking at this self-talk topic. That's why it came up for this week because a few days ago, I was doing some research and reading for my own health and healing and I'm doing great, everything's fine, but I read about the need for improved self-talk and I thought, oh yeah, that is something that um, I should definitely be looking at and I have looked at that in my own life uh, many times over many years, but we can always take it to a better level, right? We can always keep improving. And I also started to think about this topic because in the October report, I mentioned the Bhagavad Gita and I explained how Arjuna, you know, he sinks into his chariot and he's all depressed and he's like, oh God, I don't know if I can do this. And he was experiencing all this doubt and all this self-doubt and imagine his self-talk, it would have been terrible, right? It would have been all along the lines of, oh no, is this the right thing to do? I can't do it. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, he was in a lot of confusion and doubt and Krishna appears and Krishna gives him all this self-confidence and belief in himself and basically lifts the quality of the guy's self-talk, right? And um, I started thinking, yeah, this would be a really good topic to do this week. So I wrote down the topic, you know, uh, I think the topic I originally had was, is your self, or well, let's look at this, the quality of your self-talk, right? Um, and then in the mail, I received this and I thought, aha, this is fantastic. So this came at a really good time. I wasn't sure when it was going to arrive. Um, we would have been doing this with a different deck quite possibly, but this is just stunning. The artwork in here is glorious. And what I'll do is I'll link to this below so that you'll be able to take a look. And if you want to buy a copy, please do. Um, these are wonderful tools, guys, for self-reflection. I love the whole card thing. Um, sometimes people use it, uh, you know, in a slightly different way to how I do. I'm a bit more pragmatic and practical in how I use it. It's a tool for self-reflection. And what I ask is that when you come into a reading of mine, that you use your intuition, right? As much as I do, you use your intuition. You look at the pictures, see what comes up for you. Start to tune in, start to see what's coming in for you. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a wonderful tool to just see where you're at with certain things. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention was, yeah, use your intuition and of course use your intuition to pick from group one, two, three. I think that was about it for the intro. Oh no, well actually, I did have a couple more things to explain with the introduction. So the other thing about self-talk is, and I've got this written in my notes, um, is, so I'll just read out what I've got actually, because it's um, probably neatly written and <laughs> organized. So self-talk, right? So this self-talk concept, why should we look at this? So self-talk is like the quality of the soil in our minds. If you plant a seed, a wish, like, you know, I'd like to get married one day, or I'd like to do this job or whatever it is, um, you know, can that seed manifest in soil that is made up of thoughts like, I'm no good, how can I do this, I'm lazy, I can't do it, I don't have the energy, I'm unattractive, whatever it is, right? Whatever is going on in our minds. Sometimes it's subconscious. That's the other thing. Sometimes we're not consciously doing it, right? Um, and we're not conscious of the quality of the soil in our minds, right? If you want to look at the soil analogy, um, so that when you do plant a seed, when you do plant a wish, you know, how does that flourish? How does that grow for you? The other way of looking at this self-talk concept, 
um, is to look at the fact that our body is composed of water. Okay, and we all know Masaru Emoto, uh, who figured out that the vibrations that we speak in the presence of water, that water actually can store that. And I, I'm going to be doing a series on the elements coming quite soon. And um, I was thinking about how the fact that water is a storage device. And what does it store? So now he found that if you put the word love on a bottle of water, the... Um, like when you zoom in on a water cell or whatever, it, it, it's, it pictures beautifully. It's symmetrical and it's beautiful. But if you play like heavy metal music, and I mean, there's some heavy metal music I really like. So but let's say you play some music that's very, I don't know, that carries the vibration of destruction. Then the water crystal, when photographed, doesn't look very attractive. It doesn't look symmetrical. And, you know, it, it looks out of shape kind of thing. So now... You think about it, your body is composed of water, largely. So, and is it the vibration of the words? I would say, I've been thinking about this, I would say it's the vibration of the feeling. So it doesn't matter what words the words are, it matters what the feelings are. So I tend to think like, yeah, with the self-talk concept, maybe it's more earth and we've got mercury here the other reason we've got mercury here is because mercury is the young prince it is arjuna you know who's sinking into his chariot and all confused um so that's one reason that mercury is here the other reason mercury is here is because it's chatty right mercury is very chatty and talk oriented and we can't, i'm thinking of gemini and i'm thinking of that third house and it is about courage it is about um, you know, how we use words and do we use words to uplift ourselves and I always tend to think great comedians uh, and people who are humorous and lighthearted they've got a lot of great Gemini in them so that's the reason that Mercury's here but um, hopefully that suffices as a good intro so that you guys can see how I've constructed this whole thing and how I put it together what we're going to do is we're going to get straight into the reading so um, if you want to have a look at group one, we can click on group two, we can click on group three, have a look at each one. And as with any of these, if it's not resonating, you know, you don't have to watch it all. Um, but as, and another thing, as with any of my readings, take what resonates and discard what doesn't. So yeah, why don't we get stuck in? All right, so if you picked group number one, let's take a look at your cards. I'm going to show you each one and as with any of my readings please use your intuition as well see what comes up for you as you look at each visual now we have got the sage this of course is Ganeshji Lord Ganesha isn't that beautiful he is as we know the remover of obstacles I'll pop that up there. You've got two gods here. This is quite incredible. You've got Lord Shiva here as well. I was pretty amazed actually because, um, yeah, well, I'll get into why when I start the reading. But look at that. Isn't Lord Shiva just completely mesmerizing? I just love looking at pictures of Lord Shiva. Om Namah Shivai. Okay, so we've got these two up here. And then we've got some tarot as well. And I got a clarifier for you. So yours is a special group, group one. Okay, so we've got the seven of cups. Really lovely card there. Oh, hang on. Try and get these so that they all fit. Just about, it's not bad. Oh. Yeah, that's fine. That'll do. All right. Oh, yes. This, you've got the Six of Swords in reverse. You've got the Page of Swords upright. And your Mercury position is in the first house. 
I draw these out by hand and then I shuffle them and that's how I get them. So this is the, South, uh, the North Indian sorry, chart. Um, this is the North Indian way of um, looking at a horoscope for those of you who are new. Okay, now for this group I actually did get a clarifier uh, when I was looking at this earlier. I do study the cards in advance just so that you know. And this came out as your clarifier. Discernment. So let's take a look at this spread in totality. Let's see what's going on here. So when I was looking at your spread, what occurred to me is that in the context specifically of self-talk, I think you're very hard on yourself, right? I think of all the groups, you are the hardest on yourself. And it means that you are probably quite a bit of a perfectionist. You're probably working at a very high level. You're probably achieving and doing a lot. Uh, you're probably you're probably very very good at what you do and I get the sense that you're ambitious you want to do better you're not quite satisfied with where things are and I think that you've come into a little bit of a loop of being a little bit hard on yourself let me take a look at my notes here what I've got and we'll also what we're going to do is I'm going to read to you the guidance for these is on the back. So here it says, what is night for all creatures is the time of awakening for the self-controlled. And the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective sage. I really love that. That's so beautiful. And I mean, if you look at the globe and what we're going through in the world right now, those of us who are on the spiritual path, we're experiencing massive awakening, right? Uh, I know I am experiencing um, awakening and I, I you know, I'm, I'm kind of starting to pursue what I really want to do in the world, which is this, <laughs> right? So um, I know for me, I'm quite lucky in that regard, but I imagine for you as well, this is a time of great awakening. Let's have a little look at this as well. Oh yes, I love this. If one offers me with love and devotion a flower, fruit, a leaf, or even water, I accept it. Whatever you do or eat, whatever you offer or give away, whatever austerities you perform, do as an offering unto me. Yeah, that's stunning. So that's just a bit of guidance for you from the off, but how I read these two cards for you, was that in the context specifically of self-talk, and we've got Mercury here in the first house, specifically when it comes to self-talk, and really it was these three cards here, because this is kind of the solution, but when we look at just these three, what I'm seeing is that you're being hard on yourself. There's also, and because your self-talk is hard on you, because of that, you've got yourself into this situation here. Now, the situation, I've, I wrote a couple of little notes on this, that you could be finding it hard to let go of something. You could be finding that there's an issue that's difficult to resolve right now in your life. Um, or you could be resisting transition. And you're definitely re resisting transition because the transition is here and here actually. The transition is brilliant. This is wanting to come in. But what's happening is that you're you're a bit stuck. And the other thing is, and this is what's so powerful, you've manifested both of these, right, from this one deck. Now, that is incredible that you've manifested both of these because Lord Ganesha is the remover of obstacles and Lord Shiva is the destroyer as well. So you've definitely got some obstacles in your way right now. And I feel like it could be the way that you talk about your entire self, the way you speak about and think about and feel about your entire self has somehow brought you into this situation. Either you haven't been 
maybe you haven't been confident about yourself. Maybe, maybe the self-talk has been like, I'm not good enough. Um, I don't know enough. I, I don't have energy. Or, or it could be that you're believing what someone else has said about your energy. Maybe a parent always told you that, you know, um, constantly gave you the message that, you know, you, you don't have energy, you can't do that, or something like that, right? Um, you can transform that. You can change that. You can decide to be your own authority in life and not so much be listening to the opinions of others because, you know, we've got the, the house of the other is opposite. And you might be being influenced by others uh, at this time. So there is that. I got a clarifier for you guys because I really wanted to see what's going on in a bit more depth. So you're the only group that I drew a card from Queen of the Moon Oracle. And here we've got this word discernment. So this is also showing me, I think, that your self-talk has been heavily influenced by other people. Because when you have a planet on one, this line here, you can read its opposite. And I'm going to read its opposite and say, because of the presence of this card, I think your self-talk has been influenced by uh, other people, by opinions. And what you need to do in this situation, because the good is here, this is coming in. And what is this? What is the good that's wanting to come in? So you're currently in a situation where I think you have obstacles. You need something to be burnt up and destroyed, right? So you could definitely benefit from just sitting and saying Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai. If you could do it 108 times, that'd be amazing. Um, but just embed that into your self-talk. Just remember every now and then to say it, you know. Uh, just remember every now and then when you're eating a meal, offer it to Lord Shiva first or offer something that you've received to Lord Shiva first. Or maybe you're walking in a park or something. You can pick a flower and come home, put it in a vase and um, offer it to Lord Shiva. But so you've got some obstacles in the way you've got a situation where you are stuck there's an issue there's something and I, I think it and I'm gonna say it <laughs> because that, that this is what I'm seeing here I think you you are partly to blame for <laughs> this situation in that it's something about you not valuing the greatness of who you are the beauty of who you are the beauty of your internal self something about that you haven't valued it or you you know you've been putting yourself down or something along those lines and that's partly why you're in this situation now this is easy to resolve because this is what's wanting to come in and this what's wanting to come in is really really beautiful you've got so many creative opportunities on the horizon they're glittering there's lots of them I remember I think a couple of weeks ago I did a reading for group number one and I had said something about um, what you're wanting to manifest and bring in is huge. That's probably still there if you are regular at watching number one. But this is not that. This is something a bit different. This is fresh energy. This is a brand new cycle. This is like um, glittering sparks of light on, on an ocean there's lots of tiny little beautiful op opportunities that are wanting to come in creative opportunities things that you can do that you're just going to be great at right and you'll be able to do and you'll start getting results and there'll be small results at the start but it'll come in and it'll feel really good we've got the page of swords here and you can see here the butterfly You've manifested this. Your wings are ready. You've just come out. Okay, you're just about ready to fly uh, and pick up some of these, some of these beautiful glittering opportunities that are sparkling on the horizon. And that the reason I'm saying that is because it's a page. We're dealing with young energy, swords. This is also to do with air as well. Um, so maybe, and that's probably why I'm getting the visuals of... Um, 
glittering light flecks on an ocean. Okay, this is wanting to come in. What you need to do, and it's not hard, it's just a matter of improving that self-talk. So I'll give you some examples because what the kind of things that have brought you here need you know manifesting all this are things like I'm not good enough. So now you need to say to yourself, I am good enough. Of course I'm good enough. You need to embody that feeling of of course I'm good enough. And that feeling of excitement of you know, gosh, I can't wait. I can't wait to try out that new thing that's on the horizon. There is also some rest here. Rest. Get a little bit of energy before you flap those wings. Okay. Um, but yeah, in terms of the question, is your self-talk constructive? I would say it is, but there's been some <coughs> something negative going on to bring you into a bit of a situation where you're a little bit stuck and you're a little bit, um, you know, and you, you're going to need discernment from other people's opinions. You've got to work out what's you and what's the other person's opinion. And you've got to say no to that other person's opinion. So if someone's trying to influence how you feel about things or you have to figure out what you want, you have to figure out, okay, this is me, this is what I want. And really, the energy will come. The energy, you've manifested, you see, because you've, it's here. The new opportunities are here. You're about to flap your wings. It's not going to be too hard. It's just a shift of self-talk. And the other thing I can recommend is reading the Bhagavad Gita. Read the Bhagavad Gita. Read Krishna encouraging Arjuna. Uh, that's another thing that you can do at this time. So group one, I do hope this has been helpful. Um, you can also pray to Lord Ganesha. You can pray to uh, Lord Shiva as well. These are beautiful things. There's a lot you can do that's, that can just turn this around quite easily. All right. So I hope this has been good for you, group number one. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Hi, group number two. Let's take a look at your cards. As with any reading that I ever do, I always ask you to use your intuition as we go along. I'm just going to bend these cards a little bit. They're kind of bent the other way. Um, use your intuition as we go along. See what comes up for you as I show you the cards and then I'll tell you the analysis that I've come to. So we've got this beautiful card here, Sacrifice. Lord Ganesha there looking absolutely stunning as always oh this is beautiful success in yoga could also be read as success in union as well isn't that lovely so that's absolutely beautiful you've got a really lovely spread here actually oops oh i just messed up the camera hold on is that better that's better that's good Okay, <laughs> I'll probably have to move these. I'll figure it out. I'll spread them all out first. You have got the Ten of Cups. One of the best cards to get ever. I love this card. That is kind of like the dream, the dream come true, the dream life, right? Everybody wants to get this card, so you've got it. Now the Queen of Wands was in reverse, that's right. So that's very interesting there. And now we have got the Ten of Swords upright. Please don't think this is a negative card, it looks really bad, but um, it's the end of a cycle. Okay, that's what I always see there with that one. Your group was actually really clear in that I didn't have any extra cards or clarifiers or any of that. Uh, okay, we've got Mercury in the sixth house. Fantastic. Mercury likes being in the sixth. Oh, it's a great position for Mercury. Far out. This is like one of the best to get. So you've got a really, really lovely spread here. Now in the context 
of self-talk, what are we dealing with? So is your self-talk constructive? I would say your self-talk is pretty good. I don't think you're too bad at that. I don't think you're too down on yourself or too negative or any of that. For you though, in this spread, it's specifically about self-talk in regards to your love life, okay? We've got this card here indicating that, right? We've also got this card here indicating that union, a happy relationship, a blissful, beautiful relationship where you're feeling this kind of beautiful thing all the time, <laughs> that is there for you, okay? That is part of your life this time around. You are meant to experience exactly this, this beautiful stuff that you've manifested right here. But there's a little bit of drama here in this story, all right? So you do have a little bit of work to do. I would say that you've, there might have been arguments recently, there might have been some tension in the love life, there might have been problems, but I feel like you've come to the end of it. I feel like, or you are coming to the end of it, right? If you're in a bit of a tough spot, if you're in a bit of a challenge to do with the love life, it could be arguments, it could be, um, Basically, a dynamic that hasn't been working is coming to an end, all right? And I know that it's to do with arguments because of this Mercury position here. There has been, I would say, a bit of ego, arguments, drawing the line, tension. There, there has been some stuff that you've been dealing with in your intimate relationship. By the way, if this isn't you, you can click off and watch a, another video or something because this is quite a specific one about relationships. I know not everyone is in one right now, but if you're not in one, the other thing it could be is that a dynamic could be clearing anyway. So let's say you are in the situation, for example, that you're single and maybe you're in separation from someone or you're longing for someone or you there's someone you kind of like and all that kind of thing. I mean, there could be a dynamic from your past that is coming to an end. Now, what is this dynamic? It's in this card here. It's the fact that you're not very good. This is what I'm gonna say, and I'd say this in a gentle way. You're not very good at asking for what you want in relationships. Now, am I right? Uh, this might be tricky for you. This might be tricky for you to, to express to the other what it is that you you really want or that, that's really going to bring you joy or that's really going to excite you or there's something you, you want to do. It could also be that sometimes in relationships you might feel a little bit capped by the other. So your joy or your excitement or contentment or courageousness or you want to be wild or whatever and sometimes you feel that maybe in your partnership that gets curbed or capped or something like that. So it could be a little bit of that as well. But I'm reading this to be because it's in the context of self-talk and because we have Mercury here, I'm reading this to be you sometimes have difficulty speaking up and asking for your needs to be met in a relationship. Um, that, is, that is very much what I'm seeing. Also, we have this sacrifice card here. Let's just read um, what's at the back here so that you've got this guidance as well. So any action that is not performed as a sacrifice to God is a source of bondage to this material world. Therefore carry out your prescribed duties as a sacrifice, remaining unattached to the results. Yes, I remember looking at this now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll read this one as well. Be steadfast in yoga. O Arjuna, perform your duty without attachment, remaining equal to success or failure. Such equanimity of mind is called yoga. Yeah. Here's the other thing about the relationships side of things. With this thing here that, say for example, you're not so great at asking for your needs to be met. Um, you know, and you might be kind of hoping or wanting for the other person to just get that or that, well, they should just understand. They should just know, they should know me by now, right? But this is the thing, not everyone's a mind reader and not everyone knows. And sometimes relationships do benefit from you speaking up and saying, hey, this is me, this is who I am, this is what I want. 
And part of what's happening with these two cards up here, <coughs> oh wow, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. That's kind of interesting because this is about speaking up and yeah, I can feel my voice starting to go. It's like, yeah, there is some thing here about not being able to say what it is that you want. The other thing is it's about boundaries as well. Okay, and I think maybe that's the lesson that you have been learning uh, recently about how to hold and maintain your boundaries because this is a boundaries thing, this Mercury position here. You need to be really good at expressing this is me, this is who I am, this is, and really owning that inner royalty, right? Whether you're a man or a woman. Um, maybe if you're, a, oh, sorry if my microphone keeps knocking against this. Thing. Um, where was I? Queen of Wands. Yeah, so it's like owning your inner royalty, owning the greatness of who you are, owning your everything that you are, you know. Um, so your self-talk needs to elevate. Yours is really quite good. Your picture is really, really very good. Uh, this is good, this way up, okay? Because it does mean an end, it does mean um, a dynamic is coming to an end. This in reverse is just the only little thing that's concerning me and it is to do with your self-talk. It is to do with, you know, um, how you feel about, about your own self. Where was I in, in relation to this? So we were looking at this, yeah, boundaries. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Um, in order for you to truly have this, you're going to have to master your boundaries. It's, it's like, and mastering this concept of that you need, to, you need to give out the highest quality of, of yourself, the highest quality of this is me. And so you've got your boundary, right? Your nice firm boundary. And you give out the best of yourself. You give out that, okay, well, I'm just going to love you. I'm just going to give out this love. And don't worry about what's coming back in. That's what this is about. This is about don't worry about the result. Don't worry about the reward. Don't worry about what's coming back in. You keep giving out your royal, regal love letters and seal of approval and, you know, all the beauty that you are. Right, because the purpose of life, we don't come here to get love or be loved, we come here to love. Okay, so if you're doing that, basically that, that brings this upright and this pretty much becomes a thing of the past. Um, so that's what you've got going on here. It's really good and, and it's simple. All you have to do is, is keep giving out love, really. Uh, and not, don't be attached to what comes back in. Don't worry that, you know, don't expect anything in return. And that's what Osho teaches. He had this thing, I watched this video by him one time, I absolutely loved it. He said, just go on giving love letters out to the universe. And he, what he's saying is just keep expressing your love. You know, that's all you need to do. And and the the, the great things of life, the dreams and things that everyone wishes for, that's yours. That's here. You've manifested that now. It's just a little bit of work you need to do. So in terms of this, is your self-talk constructive? I would say yes, yours is quite good. But I think in, re in regards to relationship, intimate relationship, I think that's where your self-talk is letting you down just a little bit. I think that there has been some argumentativeness, um, perhaps a bit of ego or some, some dynamic has likely come to an end. Even if you're single, it doesn't matter actually, because this is likely going to leave your life, this dynamic. Whatever this dynamic is that has hindered your relationships before, this is coming to an end or has come to an end. There's something that you've overcome and it's to do with, possibly to do with you not being able to ask for what you want, right? But let's say you do that. Then if you're able to successfully ask for what you want, the other thing that you want to be able to successfully do is keep giving out your love from your beautiful firm boundary. Keep giving it out. Don't worry about what comes back in. 
because you're abundant, right? You, if this is your boundary, you're just full of abundance. We're going to take this out. You're just full of abundance, right? This beautiful boundary. You're full of all this glorious abundance. And you can give. You can give love out without it depleting you. It won't deplete you. Um, you're, you're just giving. And of course it's going to come back in. You don't know when or where or by whom or what. You don't know that. But it's of course going to come back in. Absolutely it is. Uh, and you can see that as a service to the world as well. We've got Mercury in this position here. Very much a service to the world. You being loving. You having loving self-talk about yourself, about others. Um, that's just going to that's just going to grow and be amazing and this is the kind of house that keeps improving over time so it's just going to keep getting better and better and better the more you do it the more loving you are in your own self-talk and towards others and not expecting anything in return so this is a really beautiful spread group two um, don't worry about this dynamic it's really it's it's coming to an end and if if you ever have to Go through another round of it it'll be better next time as long as you keep up that loving self-talk for yourself and keep giving love out to others right it'll all come back so group two i hope this has been helpful for you please do like if you like this reading um, please also remember to subscribe it really helps me out it helps me to keep doing these videos so i want to thank you so much and see you next time Hi, group number three, let's take a look at your cards. Okay, so as with all of my readings, I always ask everyone to use their own intuition. Use your intuition as I go through the cards. See what comes up for you. Okay, so we've got tolerance. And it doesn't matter if, you know, you haven't read the guidebooks or you don't know the system or whatever. See what comes up. See what comes up as... As I go through these and as of course as I speak use your intuition to see is this group for me if it is stay with me if it's not click on to another video okay so we've got tolerance here absolutely beautiful artwork isn't that just stunning and I will look at the back and we will read what's at the back of these so that you get a feel for it whoops okay wombs of misery please don't be put off by the title Rooms of Misery, it might sound like misery, oh no. No, 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 it's not. Um, this is a beautiful card to receive. So that's absolutely stunning. Okay. And for tarot, we have got Six of Cups, one of the best cards to get. This is a beautiful card, one of my favorites. I love when I get that. Yeah. <laughs> We've got the Eight of Pentacles upright. The other thing is that all of your cards are upright. So that's fantastic. You guys are quite good, I will say. You've got a really nice spread and it's making me think that your self-talk is quite good. So the Empress upright. Another beautiful card. Honestly, this and this, two of the best cards to get. So you've manifested a lot of good here. Page of Wands. Another stunning card. And your Mercury position is in the fourth house. All right, so, and this is the North Indian uh, Sidereal Vedic chart system for those of you who are new. Okay, what do we have here? I would say, in the answer to the question, is your self-talk constructive? I would say you're doing quite well. You're doing the best of all the three groups, actually. Um, well, the other two. You guys have got a very, very good spread that's showing me that your self-talk is probably of quite a high quality. You're probably quite supportive to yourself. I think you've manifested a nice place for yourself in life. I would imagine that materially, for example, um, you're doing fine. Uh, but more than materially, I feel like spiritually you're doing good, right? Inside you're doing quite good at this time, okay? A lot of people are having meltdowns and breakdowns and all that kind of thing. I don't think that's you at all. 
Um, I think your self-talk is quite good and you're really just looking how can I take it to the next level. That's what I get from this group. You're, I would imagine, quite advanced spiritually and you're just looking, okay, how can I improve? I just want to keep improving. And I think this wouldn't be too hard for you to do. What we're going to do is we're going to read these two. I've got an idea as to what this spread is about, but we'll read these so that you've got the guidance from these cards. So it says here, the temporary appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance over time are like the coming and going of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sense perception and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. Okay, beautiful. And the other card, and it was really interesting because these two go really well together, I thought. The pleasures that derive from contact with sense objects are the wombs of misery. They have both a beginning and an end and thus the wise take no delight in them. Okay. So what I got, the analysis I have here is that I think self-talk wise, you're very good. You're doing great, in fact. But where, what you are doing is you're, you're either in a wistful past of like looking back and the nostalgia of times gone by that were really good in your life um, maybe it was a great relationship, maybe great times when you were a teenager or in childhood or in your 20s or something about you reflecting on good times gone by. Okay, So you're either in a, a wistful past or you're in the future. Where you're not is you're not in the now. <laughs> okay, And that's what the self-talk I think mm, needs to be a bit more about I feel like you're either yeah you're, you're kind of either in the future um, and that's what when you look at this card wounds of misery it's kind of like they have both a beginning and an end there's a time dimension here right so that's why I'm getting a time dimension um, coming through that you're either in the future or in the past this is a card of nostalgia and the past and that's why I feel like sometimes you escape to fun times in the past, right? Um, these are also cards of, they're very much cards of non-attachment. Not to be attached. And to, I think, and you know, materially I think things have been good for you. I think you're not in a bad way materially. Even though it might be hard, even though it might be you've lost your job or something like that. I know, I understand. Um, but there'll be some level of that you're being sustained, you're okay. Um, so, because I know it's tough financially for everybody right now, I know that. Uh, me too, <laughs> right? So, um, but you're, you're okay, right? You're okay. Spiritually, you're okay. Inside, you're okay. You know it's all going to come good. You, I feel like you're quite strong in those areas. What you need to do is you need to be in the now. The now. If your self-talk can really bring you into the now, then what you're going to do is you're going to connect with this, what wants to be birthed. Something wants to come in and it's creative in nature. It's a little bit of fire. There's a bit of fire. There's like something new and exciting wants to be born through you right now. And if your self-talk is just about the future, worry about the future and indulgence of the past, you know, um, if that's where you are, you're going to be, the, the flame is burning, right? There's fire here and the flame is burning and I'm going to light a match for you. I don't know if you watched last time's reading. I did this for a different group and I will be lighting a match. I'm going to be do doing a, an episode on fire. Um, I love doing this. But it's like, you see, oh, it's gone out. No, it's come back on. There we go. This is the flame. It's on now, right? And that's this. It's like, it's a page of uh, wands here, right? I better not let that burn me. But um, you see, the flame has gone out. There's no flame here now. I love looking at this. Oh, hang on, will it focus? Is it going to focus? No, it's not going to focus. But if you look here, that is charred and gone. 
And that's kind of this. You can't relight this. It's gone now. Okay, it might have been very good. It might have been wonderful. It might have been, you know, you're picturing yourself in the arms of a past lover or something like that. Wonderful, obviously. But um, it's gone. <laughs> okay, even though it was good, it's gone. And uh, the future, right, this is yet to happen. And that's the live wood that's yet to... And this is not going to focus, is it? Oh, there we go. Look at that. I love bringing this out because it's such a good tool to say that you can't light that again. It's gone. Now this is yet to come in. And you could spend time thinking about it, but these cards are not suggesting that. These cards are really suggesting that you focus in on the now, where the flame is. You need to get in tune with the flame that is you, right? And it's, it's that fire energy. You want to connect into fire energy. You want to connect into your creativity. You want to use your self-talk to create that next level of life. Be in the now, where the flame is. That's where it's at. And you will start birthing this. It will start coming through. You'll be given guidance. You'll be given ideas. You'll be given instructions. You'll be told. You'll be told the next steps. You, you don't have to do much. You, if you're in the now, it's going to come in. But currently, where your self-talk is, is your self-talk is either in the future or it's, it's somewhere in the past. And it's not in the now. Now, what are you able to create? What are you going to be creating? I do think it's something to do with your home life. Um, it could be in regards to education. It could be. Um, you might be educating yourself. You might be learning something new. You might be taking a course. You might be doing something like that. But I really do think it could be in relation to your home, uh, home life or your relationships at home. It could even be birthing, bringing in a new relationship. Um, don't know if anybody's expecting or any of that. It could could literally be that. Um, it could also be, you know, making space or getting ready for a new partner. Um, could be a deepening of relationship with your mum, for example, right? With Mercury in this place here. That could be something that could be really amazing. Um, and that's always a good thing because... And that's kind of tying into some of this. It's like knowing our past, you know, to know how we are built. Uh, it is important to spend time with our parents and ask them how were things for them and find out from them about their parents because that will really help you going forward to know as much as you can about the emotional life of your parents and and your grandparents if you're fortunate enough to be able to do that that's incredible so but for you what i'm getting is that it's you really really your self-talk needs to be in the here and now and because this creative thing wants to come through and it's wonderful whatever it is it's it's you're going to love it and i think you're going to love it more than whatever you've loved before um it could be a new a new dynamic, a new way of relating that's wanting to come through. That's another thing. Sometimes we're clearing out old dynamics, old patterns. Maybe there was something that wasn't working for us in the past, but I don't see too much of that here for you. I think it's um, I think it's something really new and really nice that's just wanting to come through. And I, I don't think it's going to take too much effort either. I feel like, because it's here, it's upright, it's good. It's like, this really wants to come in. Um, just all it is is about self-talk and making the environment of your mind a welcoming home. That's another thing, how about that? This is actually a concept that I play with in my own mind. I, I try to make my mind um, like a workshop where angels can do their work and they can come and they can be creative and they can kind of tell me what to do. And that this Mercury position here could be that you are working with guides and angels or your angelic team or whatever it is. You want to make that a beautiful home for them in order to come and be creative through you, right? You want to make your mind, you know, the environment of your mind welcoming for excellent 
and excellence in creativity and excellent creatives on the other side to come and work with you, right? So that really could be what you're dealing with, which is super exciting. Um, that's why with your group, I feel like it's quite, it's quite kind of high level, it's quite abstract, it's quite um, fine what we're dealing with here. It's lovely. And I think, yeah, I think you're amazing. <laughs> I think you're, um, you're at a good level, you're at a good place to birth something quite special and quite new. And it really is about making the environment of your mind a welcoming and inviting place. Yeah, one of the other things I do in my mind sometimes, and this is kind of reminding me of this, this could be this here or Mercury in the third, I sometimes try and make my angels laugh, right? It sounds a bit crazy, but like sometimes I've got jokes and I, I just make them laugh, you know what I mean? Like, so um, self-talk can be amazing, you know, it, it can be very nurturing. And I think that that's something that you can do with the energy that's here. You can really make your self-talk very nurturing towards yourself. Um, create a real wonderful home for your own psyche, for your own mind, for your own inner gifts and talents to to thrive you know make make that mind of yours a very homely welcoming beautiful space so group three i hope <coughs> apologies my voice is going a bit um i hope this has been a good reading for you please do let me know in the comments below how you enjoyed this how it worked for you um and please do give this video a like and subscribe to the channel it really helps out the channel so much and it, it helps me to be able to keep doing these videos so thank you so much for tuning in and i look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.